Hello everyone and welcome back. So in this video, we're going to be building a professional profile web page using only HTML or using only what we have learned so far in this series. So this is the sixth video, as you know, uh, since I started this series on HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So as you can see, we started here, uh, one, two, three, four, five, and this is the sixth one. So we're going to be applying what we've learned so far in this course. And of course, there are new things that we're going to be learning. The break tag, style tag, UL, that stands for unordered list, and OL for ordered list, and LI for list. So basically, these two right here are things that we use in order to create a list. Like, for example, like uh, uh, a recipe, like or the step-by-step -step process of a certain uh, concept. Okay, so we also have here attributes that we're going to be learning. Uh, the style attribute, we have, we're going to learn how to set the background color of a certain element, uh, properties and values, as well as this margin, width, height, border radius, and text align. All of these are under the style tag. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So let me minimize this one and open up Visual Studio Code. Okay, let me maximize this one and close this current project because we're going to be creating a new one. Okay, so we're going to be clicking Open Folder. Uh, navigate to desktop in this folder and we're going to name this professional uh, profile professional underscore profile all right so select that one okay so since we have this pop-up right now uh, it's likely that you will not encounter this but just in case just check this checkbox over here and click uh, i trust the authors right click here and then index.html for our file and let's go ahead and use the emit plugin by just typing the exclamation point and then tab on the keyboard to generate this starting template for html all right so let's save this and let's change the title maybe we can write something like my uh, profile and let's go ahead and use our guide over here to make sure that we are on the right track so let's start with a div right over here so type div and then tab on the keyboard as you can see, we have this opening tag and closing tag for this uh, HTML element. So what is the purpose of div? Div is just to group multiple HTML tags or HTML elements. So for example, over here, you, you can have here an H2 and you can type here something like about me. And after that, maybe you have something like a paragraph over here. And what I'm going to do right now, I'll just go ahead and paste a description so on your end, feel free to type uh, anything here uh, that will describe yourself. And right now, I'm just going to press Alt-Z on the keyboard to make sure that the code is wrapped around within this available window or the size of our window. So feel free to write your own story here. And I'm going to right click here and open with Live Server so that we will see on the page what is happening to our project. And as you can see, we already have this H2 and the paragraph. All right, so next, let's just go ahead and pull out our guide over here. And uh, let's check the paragraph. I think we're already familiar with that. What is the BR tag over here? BR tag stands for break. So for example, over here, we have this paragraph. We know that this paragraph is continuous, right? So I'm going to press the Alt-Z again to toggle the uh, wrap code or wrap text. As you can see, it is continuous. The only reason that it's showing up right now is because we are using the Alt-Z or the wrapping of text. Uh, you can also use that over here uh, by clicking on view and then word wrap. So it's just forcing the text to go into the next line. But uh, in reality or technically, it is a continuous text over here. We have the opening P tag and we have the closing paragraph tag right over here. So what we're going to do is click over here and maybe type a couple of uh, enter, uh, press the enter key a couple of times, and maybe another one over here, like so, maybe over here as well. And let's go ahead and save our work. So save all, and let's see what happens to our project. So over here, we have this project being previewed. And as you can see, nothing happened. Even though we have pressed some space, some white spaces here using the enter key, uh, but on the browser, they are still, they are still intact. All right. So that's one thing to understand right now is by default, text in HTML ignores extra spaces. 
it will only entertain one space, like uh, space over here for each word. So let me just go ahead and undo all these changes. And I'm going to wrap the text now on the VS Code. So the break tag, if I'm going to put a BR here, okay, so save that. And as you can see, the, the following sentences over here were forced to be on the next line. So that's how you can use the break tag. So for example, let's have another one over, over here. Uh, the next sentence was forced to the next line. In fact, if you are going to like uh, apply maybe four breaks, it will actually give you some space like so. All right, so that's the use of break tag. And also you will notice with other tags, for example, the body tag, there's an opening and closing uh, tag, as well as the H2, there's an opening H2 tag and the closing tag. For the BR tag, you don't need a closing tag. Uh, we call this a self closing tag in HTML. It's the same with the HR tag, okay? When you press tab uh, and then the VS code will autocomplete, it will only give you HR and then this symbol greater than and less than. So HR and BR tag are self-closing tags in HTML. Let me go ahead and delete them because we want our paragraph to be intact. So let's go ahead and save our work. Now we're back with this layout. All right, so let's continue. I'm gonna be adding an image over here in our project. So I'm going to right click here and reveal in File Explorer. And I'm just going to paste here my own profile picture. So feel free to use your own picture. So I copied that from my computer I'm, and I'm going to right click here and then paste. And let me just go ahead and change the view to large icons. And as you can see, I have an image over here. Okay, so let me close this one and uh, go back to our VS Code. And what we're going to do is we're going to add here a div again. And inside here, we're gonna be adding an H1. So I'll type here uh, some uh, random name, John Doe. And uh, maybe we can have a paragraph here and let's say aspiring. So we can say here web developer or programmer. Feel free to have your own content. So save this, head over to our browser. Now we have this. Okay, let's add the image here at the top. And we know already that uh, we need to use the IMG keyword and then press tab on the keyboard. For the source, let's just type uh, the file name of the image. In my case, that is me underscore mypic.png. So make sure to include the file extension. So save our work. Uh, let me just go ahead and put this at the side because we're going to uh, style the layout. So we're gonna be learning now about the style attribute. So speaking of attribute, I already have mentioned before that uh, this one, we call this an attribute. So this attribute, the purpose of that is to locate or the location of the image that we wanted to uh, be displayed in our browser. In the image attribute, we can actually have here, uh, for example, height and then 150. If we are going to save this, that will reduce, as you can see, the height of our image. The width is automatically being set uh, depending on the proportion of the image. So aside from height, I mentioned that we can add here a style attribute. And for example, we are going to set the border radius to 50%. Uh, let's try 10% first. If it is going to be 10%, and if we're going to save this, as you can see, we have a uh, rounded border with this image. So that's how you can use uh, border radios. And if you're going to set this to 50%, and if we are going to increase it to 20%, as you can see, the rounded uh, corner gets closer and closer to the center of the image. Set that to 30, uh, to 40. And if you are going to set it to 50%, and save our work as you can see this is how you can uh, produce like a circular shape of an image provided that your image is a perfect square so now for example we want this image to be centered on the page uh, there are multiple ways to achieve that in programming there are always multiple ways to achieve the same result so the method that i'm going to show you right now is just one of the many ways on how you can do that so i'm going to wrap this image with a div I wanna make sure that the closing div tag is located over here at the bottom to make sure that our image tag is enclosed with the div tag. Inside the div tag, I'm going to type here an style attribute and then I'm gonna say text align center. Okay, so let's go ahead and click center. 
and let's save that. Now our image is centered. Now that we have done that, we can go ahead and copy this and paste this style attribute over to the next div. As you can see, uh, since we have two elements inside this div, both of them were centered on the page. If you want, you can have an HR a horizontal line over here, and that will give you this line. So in a professional profile, it doesn't only include the about me, right? So we can have more how about like, uh, for example, educational background or your career goals. So let's go ahead and uh, copy all of this and paste it one more time and save. So we have another H2 here in the paragraph and change that to something like uh, career objectives. And to make this faster, I have a prepared career objectives here that I'm going to copy and paste over here uh, and save this. Now we have a career objectives. So feel free to come up with your content over here. So let's head over to our guide and let's see what is the next. So we're done with style. Now let's have the UL and OL. So let me just first demonstrate to you what is the uh, OL. OL is the tag that we use if we want to generate like a flexible sequence of numbers. So for example, LI over here, and I'm going to type, for example, banana, and I'm going to copy and paste that like uh, four, uh, three more times. And this one is apple. And this one is, for example, watermelon. And this one over here, for example, grapes. So save this, and this is how it looks like on the browser. So even if we did not specify one, two, three, four, if you will do or use OL, which stands for ordered list, by the way, if we are going to hover on it, it says the OL element represents a list of items where the items have been intentionally ordered like so. So this can be useful for steps, okay? And uh, for UL, if we are going to change this to UL, which stands for unordered list, if we are going to hover over to this tag, it says represents a list of items where the order of the items is not important. So if we are going to save this, what we get are bullets. I hope that makes sense. So for a list, we can actually use this, for example, like a list of work experiences, right? Maybe educational background. Let's go ahead and do that. So we can go ahead and copy this div again and paste that over here. We can now delete this one. And for H2, we can come up here, here with something like uh, educational background. And then instead of a paragraph, we will use UL or the ordered list. Okay, you can type UL and then tab on the keyboard to autocomplete. And then LI for the list. So the LI over here, is always part of the UL or OL. So we can check that one. So maybe our first item is, for example, Bachelor of Science in uh, Information Technology. All right, maybe you can have your ABC uh, University. Uh, you can put your, your school. And we're going to assume that we are still a student. So expected graduation, uh, we can type that, let's say 2025, All right, just an example. And we can copy this one more time. And maybe the other one is going to be uh, maybe a short course, right? For example, web development uh, training, let's say XYZ uh, Institute or whatever the company uh, that you have attended the training. All right, to so save that, now we have here two bullet points under educational background with your course and then some training over here. So feel free to add more contents over here. Normally in a professional profile, you also have this like work experiences, okay? So we can copy that and just change the content to uh, work experiences. And instead of a course, maybe we can come up with like internship. And from ABC Tech Solutions, all right, I'm just trying to come up with a random uh, company name. Uh, let's say during the summer 2023. And maybe you can come up here if you have done some freelancing, uh, maybe web designer. Maybe you've been designing websites from 2022 uh, up to the present. 
All right, so if we're going to save this, now we have at least two uh, items in our work experiences. If you want, you can have another one, for example, hobbies. So you just go ahead and change the content over here, uh, hobbies. And normally we put the hobbies that are relevant to what we're applying for. So for example, exploring uh, new technologies can be a good hobby. New technologies and gadgets, okay. Uh, and uh, maybe the next one is probably photography uh, to give an impression that you have some artistic talent, maybe traveling. All right, so if we're going to save this, now we have these items in our professional profile. So when it comes to the margin or height and width, I think we're done with height and width. Uh, for the width, for example, over here in our image, so if you have to find here a width, it will actually achieve the same result, okay? So uh, because if you define height uh, only or width only, the other attribute is automatic unless you're going to specify a separate width. So for example, this one, oops, hold on. I think we accidentally deleted the style attribute. So for example, this one width, and we're going to set this, for example, 500, save that, and it will actually stretch our image like so. So that is something that we do not desire, right? So typically, we only define at least one attribute when it comes to the height and width. All right, so save this. And over here at the bottom, uh, what we're going to do is to apply what we've learned when it comes to the, uh, to the uh, anchor tags, okay? So we have some anchor tags over here. Maybe you have a YouTube channel, right? So you can put the link here of your YouTube, for example. I think I have mine opened over here. I can copy that and paste that over here. So you can copy this like two more times. Maybe you have LinkedIn, okay, maybe Instagram or perhaps Twitter. All right, so I'm not going to be changing the attributes right now. You already understand the purpose of this one. So I'm going to save this and maybe we are also going to use a style attribute over here and we're going to say text align center. Uh, save that and if we are going to check the preview of our project and we have some links over here. If we are going to click that, it will route to the link that you have used in the href attribute, this one right over here. So for LinkedIn, just paste your LinkedIn attribute over here. And for Twitter, the corresponding attribute as well. If you want, you it is also possible to add a style tag over here. And uh, let's say, for example, margin right. Uh, let's say 100 pixels. Let's try to exaggerate uh, in order to understand the concept. As you can see, there is a space for this anchor tag. So it doesn't make sense. Maybe just write around uh, 10 pixels or 20. All right. So for now, you can actually copy this and uh, paste it over here to have some spacing with the other elements as well. If you wanted to have a spacing in between this UL tag and this anchor tags over here, we know that these elements are being wrapped in a div. So you can actually define the style tag over here in fact, you can just copy this and paste it over here. Make sure there's like a, a double quotes at the end. And instead of right, we're going to say margin bottom and probably around 200 pixels. And as you can see, we have some spacing over here. That's quite a, a huge difference. Maybe just around 90 pixels, maybe around 60. All right, so I think we're good. All right, so that's it for the professional profile, as you can see. All right, so just to double check if we have covered everything, text align, border radius, margin. All right, so for the background color, it's very, very simple. So for example, we are going to target the body and uh, we have some style here and we're gonna set the background color to, for example, aquamarine. We can save that and it will apply this color over here. And aside from that, you can actually go ahead and hover over into this color and actually manually pick something maybe lighter. Okay, save that. Now we have this kind of color. All right, so feel free to experiment on your end what we have learned so far. And I hope that this has been informative for you. See you in the next one.